<sighs> Good rainy evening, YouTube. I've got a problem. I had a third gen 4 runner up on the lift for some exhaust work last weekend, and as it went up, I heard a sound no one with a lift wants to hear. I found an anchor that didn't quite look like the other ones. Seeing as I've got dependence, I decided to torque it down. <clears throat> but it just spins, and the one next to it does the same thing. So I did the right thing, and I hammered the old wedge anchor into the dirt below, and went out and I got myself some super strength concrete anchor epoxy and a beefcake threaded rod to fix the anchor properly. To my surprise, instead of hitting dirt, it dropped all the way to Beijing. Check this out. So I've been lifting cars, trucks, and vans on a thick slab of concrete over a hollow void. Wait, did I say thick? Four and a half inches, minus an inch for the steel tab. That's a three and a half inch slab with nothing underneath it and a lift on top. Now, if you know anything about installing lifts, four inches of reinforced concrete is the b -b -b bare minimum. Six inch reinforced is pretty much standard, not three and a half inches of pie crust. This whole thing was built by the previous owner who's been dead 15 years. See this crack? It was big enough to fit my hand down there when I moved in. I tried filling it with sand and crack sealer, but Pennsylvania freeze thaw cycles just laughed in my face and I suspect the water has been rushing down under the slab, just like that, and eroding my base. It's possible he was right to put a three and a half inch slab here. I don't know what the spec is for this lift. It's only rated for 5,500 pounds, but I can't find a manual anywhere. It's a Benwell GP55. If anyone can help me out with some specs. Yeah, that would be great. Okay. So what do I do? Cut out just the area under the lift and have a six inch reinforced slab poured there? What if there are more voids? Do I pony up and redo the entire floor? And if I do redo the entire slab, do I drill holes in the virgin concrete just to reinstall a 40-year-old lift from a defunct manufacturer that requires a bubblegum three-phase converter and only lifts 5,500 pounds? Or do I scrap the old girl and spend even more money on top of the repair on a modern lift? Then what do I do to keep the water out going forward? Jackhammer out this entire slab and have the entire thing re a half inch higher? Then I might as well fix all of this while I'm at it. It's a slippery slope of while I'm at it, while I'm at it, while I'm at it. To do all that's gonna cost me like 15 grand, I don't know. And a ton of time for someone who has two young kids and a full-time job that does not require having a lift. Or, for that price, do I just accept that I won't have a lift anymore, and that my workshop, my sanctuary, is now only safe for lawnmowers and Miatas? Hell, after what I've seen, I don't think I'd even park a pickup truck on this slab. I'm torn, and I need your advice. One, what's the cheapest way to make this lift safe? Two, what's the best way? And third, what would you do? Let me know what you think.